Hello, good morning everybody. Um, I'm Vikram Pendharkar, a product manager here for the data center and enterprise switching uh, group here with Cisco. Uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about programmable fabric. You know, what is it, why do we need it, and how does it all work? Um, and uh, with that, let's get started. So first of all, what's programmable fabric? You know, programmable fabric is really BGP EVPN based uh, VXLAN fabrics uh, that Cisco is introducing. It's a disaggregated approach to building uh, your solutions in the data center. Um, so that how it looks is at the bottom layer, you have your network infrastructure as it exists today. On top of that, we layer it with a VXLAN based fabric, which is IP based. Uh, but then we take it to the next level by providing you essentially three pillars. One provides the network management of your elements, you know, topology overview, provisioning, configuration. Um, second pillar is really the fabric management that allows you to do overlay services, service chaining, uh, hybrid overlays, and such. And finally, the last, but the most important pillar is really the interdomain support. Because none of us like to live in an island, you need to support multi-fabric, it needs to support data center interconnect technologies, provide you a rich feature set to be doing that. And then we wrap it all around with, of course, API, which is pervasively available to you from the switches, from the controllers, uh, from orchestration layers for you to plug into it, into your infrastructure and make it as automated as possible. So, why do we need programmable fabric? So we're gonna talk about three use cases today, starting with the first and the most popular use case of multi-tenancy. So, what does it do? A programmable fabric provides you with layer two and layer three multi-tenancy. You know, so it gives you any-to-any -any bridging, um, with the VXLAN uh, technology, it gives you better VLAN granularity, and then you get uh, tenant uh, uh, segregation, layer three tenant segregation, along with the distributed IP gateway support, which is a Cisco innovation, which allows you to not have a centralized gateway, and hence reduce the amount of scale and state that you need on each of the devices, allows you to scale out better. Why do we need this going back to the technical uh, business requirements, it really helps you reduce your capex and improve your utilization. And also because of the leaf spine architecture, it may means that you have much better network uptime uh, with it. Going through the second use case uh, is uh, inter-data center connectivity. You know, so what does it do? Uh, it helps you, um, programmable fabric provides uh, you with a rich handoff to to well-known, well-established, mature data center interconnect technologies like OTV, LISP, and MPLS. Um, it helps you provide very good DCH controls, you know, providing you failure containment uh, as well as scale containment. So if you have a misbehaving VM in one data center, it does not affect your other data center. And then it allows you a seamless cross-DC workload mobility uh, in using the best of breed technologies. So again, why do we need this? You know, it allows you to reduce your capex because you don't have to rip and replace to install a new technology. You can work with your existing data center interconnect technologies. It allows you to lower your opex because of the improved network stability by the ability of having better edge controls, which you would not have if you were doing a stretched VXLAN subnet, uh, and hence reduce your risk. Going to the third uh, use case that I want to highlight over here, uh, we're really talking about automated deployment of VM. We're talking about scalable multi-tenancy in the data center. You know, you cannot scale without having automation, which kind of helps you reduce your errors, day-to-day -day errors in your provisioning or setting up new services. So how do we do this? Um, you do this by being able to predefine your workload profiles for the network. And then when a new workload profile is detected, that is used to automatically provision the switches uh, and helps automate all of this. This really allows you to optimize your compute and storage resources, and this gives you much better business agility due to reduced network programming time. So how does this all work? You know, how is this really supported? So on the bottom layer, you have a standards-based VXLAN data plane. The VXLAN as a standard allows you up to 16 million segments, so you get a lot of scale over there. Uh, it's based essentially a MAC in UDP over IP encapsulation. So it's a well-known, uh, well-understood, mature constructs that are available to you. And then on top of that, 
Uh, it's again a standards-based multi-protocol BGP eVPN-based control plane uh, that really gives you the additional semantics to really get the power of a VXLAN-based data plane. So it really gives you protocol learning, flood prevention, uh, distributed gateway, and traffic flow symmetry. So those are the key aspects of it, of this uh, standards data plane. Cisco goes one step beyond by providing you end-to-end -end management, which gives you fabric monitoring and element management. It allows you overlay an L4 to L7 services provisioning. And then, in very importantly, it also gives you hybrid overlay support, which allows you to integrate your overlay software VTIPs as well as, as hardware VTIPs that could be available uh, on your hypervisors or on your switches. Um, and this really, in a nutshell, is how Programmable Fabric does it. So summarizing, you know, what are the benefits of Programmable Fabric for you? Uh, it's open and standards-based. So the eBGP uh, VPN control plane for VXLAN Fabric allows the use of VTS or a third-party controller to orchestrate this. Uh, it's brownfield capable. You know, this SDN is available across all of your Nexus product lines, you know, 2K, 5K, 7K, 9K. So it allows you an evolutionary way to migrate on to SDN rather than in a disruptive rip and replace fashion. It gives you very rich inter-domain support. So seamless OTV, M MPLS, MPLS handoff really gives you strong DCH controls and allows you to deploy the best of breed technologies out there today. And then it gives you end-to-end -end management to automate the management of your workloads, uh, support for physical and high, uh, uh, software overlays, as well as uh, support for uh, inter-domain handoff that reduces your errors uh, in your day-to-day -day network management. And with that, I'm done.